Hey guys. Oh, hey, uh, Adam Savage here. <clears throat> now maybe this is a continuation of another video in which I just got this, or maybe this is the beginning of this video, in which case, uh, here's what I've got. I've got a fractal vise here. It grabs and holds onto irregular objects with great strength. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, however, there's a couple of issues. One is that the harder you push on it, the more it resists, and that is not good. So what I want to do is I want to, um, you'll see when I take this apart and show it to you, but each of these half moons nests two other half moons that nest two other half moons. And each of those is a surface, and that surface meets another surface, and they have been machined to be accurate, but they're not, they're not perfect. When they're perfect, they they are married, they are one. And so what I want to do is, I want to do what's called lapping them. I wanna use some sandpaper that is a grit embedded in a cream. That's what lapping compound is. You know what else is grit embedded into a cream? Toothpaste. Toothpaste is a lapping compound for your internal face parts. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to tune this. Now in order to tune it, I'm going to be marrying like that surface with that surface, which means they need to be the same surface, right? They need to have the same name. So I'm gonna pull out some number stamps and first I'm going to A, B, C, A, B. Yeah, I'm gonna do letters all the way down. And then those will be on the undersides of these. Yeah, like that, great. So let's get to stamping. Can move this. <laughs> All right. What are my small letters? There they are. These are the small ones. Top, bottom, doesn't matter. Excellent. A A B. B. C. C. D. D. E. F. G. H, as they say in the UK. That is N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z, and then A A B B. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent. Okay, cool. That part's done. Let's put these back. Well, then we're gonna start taking these apart. So. got this stuff here, this uh, Tech Diamond Tool 1000 Grit Lapping Compound. It's worth talking about what I'm doing here uh, in this exercise. Let's get my face in there, my pretty face. Hi, I'm just rubbing parts against each other in order that, uh, they fit better. And this action of, ru of rubbing parts together to get them to fit better is literally the origins of human precision. 
and making. Yeah, when you want to make a perfectly flat surface, you need three rocks. You want to make a perfectly flat rock, you start with three rocks, A, B, and C. And you rub A against B, and B against C, and then you rub C back against A. So you're basically in a chain, you're rubbing A to B, B to C, C to A. And when you do that, there's actually this, it's literally, there's like only one shape that will end up from that exercise, and it's a perfectly flat surface. If you have two surfaces only, you can get an error in which they can bowl to each other and they don't correct. But when you're doing three surfaces, they correct for that. As a metaphor there for something, and I'm, I'm just not thinking of it just now, but. So the very first straight edge was made this way by taking two pieces of something, three pieces of something and rubbing them in order until they were surpassingly flat. And I did a video a few weeks ago here on gauge blocks, months ago now, actually maybe even years. Uh, I did a video here on gauge blocks. So I'm gonna leave those there for cleaning. Uh, and gauge blocks are also made this way. They are, they are lapped, which means small pieces of metal are lovingly rubbed with compounds just like this, lapping compounds, until they're surpassingly flat. And I don't know if you remember this fact, but like the inventor of the gauge block, Carl Edward Johansson, um, literally, oh yeah, see that's really rough. Hear that? Did you hear how, you hear that? Did you hear how that got smoother? I'm gonna do it on the next one too. Um, when you machine two surfaces, they can feel insanely flat and yet not be. They can feel flat to your fingers, but they might be off by a micron or two and you can sense that. And so what this lapping compound is doing, this toothpaste of mine, this high-end toothpaste, is it is going in there and it's acting as a, as a smoother. So where you have two slight inconsistencies in the surface, which you could hear at the beginning, that <laughs> like that, the lapping compound goes in and smooths that out. There we go. I know, I'm writing lots of jokes in my head. The origins of human precision are in rubbing, but they are. So here we go. Let's bring this over to you and you can hear it. Here is this one and... You hear that? And then as I work it, you can hear it getting smoother. That's what I'm looking to eliminate from all 30 pieces. Oh, that feels great. One of the reasons you might have clicked on this is because you're familiar with the fractal vice. And if you are familiar with the fractal vice, you're familiar with the fact, well, actually, here's a picture of the fractal vice. Uh, all right, so what you can see is the same number of semicircles, and yet, at the very ends, instead of flats, my vice has this, it's confronted with this. And what I'd like to do is, let me get a pen. What I'd like to do is to add some teeth to this. So I would like to carve, a channel in it like that, and then, and then I think soften the edges like that. So I'd be cutting out 
that sound of dripping you hear is that I've already been doing some of this. So that's what I'd like to do. And to carve a channel out of these little doodads is non-trivial. How do you do that? Well, I came up with a method. I bored out these two semicircles so they perfectly match the curve of this. It's over five eighths of an inch, just over. And I have a way to clamp this in the vise. These two, the centers of these two board circles are exactly an inch apart. And what I'm doing is I'm sitting the, uh, I'm sitting these final jaws in here one at a time and I'm milling them out with a carbide ball end mill. That's the step one. And then I want to soften the edges like that. Um, but let's, um, plus my little stamp numbers are remaining on each part. Uh, every now and then I go back to this and work with these just a little bit. I worry them a little bit. That's an old arcane use of the term worry that I think is really neat. You can just worry that for a while and it will come loose. Uh, so, um, to the mill. And we put in this business. We put in this business, yep. And then we place these here. Now, how do we know that they are both A, square to each other, i.e. their flats line up, and how do we know that they're in the same position re the machine? Well, I could just set up a stop over here, but instead I just did it so that when that's up against that. I'm in the right position. And I bring it in and I do a very loose tighten. <laughs> yeah, I said loose tighten. And then I put this across both of these and that's how I know that they're square to each other because there's only one position in which they can both be level and that's when they're square to each other. This milling bit is centered on there and I'm at exactly, yeah, so here we go. Now, it's a hot operation, so I keep cooling on it. Ice, very happy with that. So that dripping sound you hear, that's my coolant uh, pouring out of the mill into uh, a bucket. Okay, now we do a couple more. So here's what happened that I didn't see happening is that when I squeezed these, I squeezed them like this and they they bowed and thus, so far of A, B, C and D, only D fits, but I just did a hammer treatment on C to try and open it up a little bit and I succeeded. And so that's what I've got to do with these. Let's do a little bit more of that with each of these and then I can get these all back together. Good Lord. Let's see. This is like my worst nightmare is that I have compromised all 16. <laughs> yes! How can we talk that way? I had a stroke! One of the great lines from The Simpsons. I think written by my friend David Sell Silverman. Uh, all right, so let's see here. This is F. One more time. Wait. I 
Things are moving. Things are happening. I thought that I had uh, permanently warped all these pieces, but I did not. Luckily, I had to go through a process. Let me show you here. I had to go through a process of taking out a bow in here that was pinching these in like that. So I had to hammer hammer on this to spread it back out again. And then I also I softened the sides and the inner corners. So I effectively added a whole new set of jaws by making each of these single jaws a double jaw. Now I'm gonna wash them in the parts washer to get rid of all the grease and everything. First up, I wanna do a, a kind of a general, a general cleanup. So let's, uh, let's disassemble. Each one of these has been lapped to a specific location and each location is allocated by a number stamp. So uh, I'm pretty happy with all of this. I didn't actually think it would go this fast to be fair. Don't go a lot slower, frankly. Let's try and do this. I know that's not ideal. They will ding each other, but that's fine with me. So uh, we want some whey oil. And we're going to start like this. One of the moments of truth. Uh, <clears throat> we are going to uh, put this back here. <laughs> and we're going to put this back there. So much better. Oh, yeah. Look at that improvement. These aren't perfect, these little doodads out here, but they're good enough. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, well, the very next thing I wanna, oh yeah, here, let's grab something irregular, perhaps. Why are you sticky all of a sudden? Wait a second. I may need to lap this one more set to a higher degree. Not sure. I'm actually curious about your thoughts on that. I shouldn't have to sculpt this to meet the, there we go. That's kind of what I want. All right, I think I have the crazy thing that I want to do here. Uh, oh. <clears throat> okay, holding this vise. All right, we're gonna grab something that's really hard to grab well. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right, so uh, I have clamped a glass bottle in here of a certain famous kind. I, we don't have to see the logo. Uh, this It's mirrored because there was a science class that did a mirroring test and they brought the bottle to me as a gift. I think they'll be pleased that I use this as a test platform to see if I can mill a slot in glass using my vice. All right, so let's see here. Let go this to this. Ah! Uh, that goes to there. This goes to here. I don't know if this is possible. I don't have any idea if this is possible, but I do know that with a Dremel and this double helix 
uh, carbon bit, I believe, that I can carve into glass. So we're just gonna give it a shot. Having a little trouble drilling through here, but let's see here. It's a slot and a bottle. Okay, I also milled two. They're not pretty, but holy cow. I milled a slot and a bottle. A slot and a bottle. Dude, dude Aronomy. Whew, that was thrilling. That was thrilling. We got some cracking in there. I will tell you that I cut two slots. One, I accidentally forgot to turn on the camera. The first slot went stupendously well. There it is, and then the second one was a little shite, but still, still, that's a slot milled in a glass bottle. That's a slot milled into a glass bottle. I, for one, am pleased with my new vice overlord. I may need to do some more lapping on this in the future. Hey, t uh, so I lapped all uh, 40 of these pieces to each other with a 1,000 grit lap. Um, Give me some advice in the comments if I should use a uh, higher and I'll get better or is there a specific type of grease or oil uh, that will pro provide extra lubricity under pressure? That's what I'm looking for. And I know I got glass dust in there. I got to take all this apart and clean it all again. And I will after this video. But thank you guys for joining me for this adventure or shall I say misadventure. Um, holy cow. This fractal vice is the coolest thing ever. A slot in a bottle. A slot in a bottle. See you guys next time.
I can't thank you enough for supporting us by watching the channel. If you've been to our merch store, you might want to head there again because we are always updating our roster with new products. Here is the anime-inspired Tested logo in Japanese, my, one of my all-time favorite new designs. Uh, we're also selling Tested mugs and Tested hats. Oh, and if you want a cup of tea, we're selling that too. Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. <laughs>